This is part 27 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing list view in ASP.NET Core MVC. Let's understand this with an example. We want to retrieve all the employees and display them on a web page using an HTML table as you can see right here. At the moment, our employee repository interface I employee repository has only one method get employee which returns a specific employee by ID. Now let's include a method which is going to return us the list of all employees. So the return type of this method is going to be I enumerable of employee and let's name the method get all employees. At the moment, within our project, we have only one implementation for this interface I employee repository, and that implementation is in this mock employee repository class. Notice we have a red squiggly under this I employee repository interface. That's because at the moment we have not yet provided implementation for the new method get all employees, which we just added to I employee repository interface. I'm going to click on this and then press Control period and ask Visual Studio to implement the interface for us. Notice Visual Studio has automatically generated the method declaration for us. Now all this method is going to do is return this private employee list field. Notice we are populating this field with a hard-coded list of three employees. In our upcoming videos in this series, we are going to provide another implementation for this I employee repository and that implementation is going to retrieve data from a SQL Server database. For now, to keep things simple, I am going to return this private field from our getAllEmployees method. Now, in the index action method of our home controller, let's call get all employees method of employee repository. This method returns list of all employees. Let's store that list in a variable. I'm going to name the variable model. And then let's return a view. To the view method, let's pass our model object. The view method returns view result. So let's also change the return type of this method to view result. At the moment, we don't have a view for this index action. So to the home folder, let's add a new view file with name index.cshtml. The first thing that we're going to do here is specify the model for our view. We do that using the model directive. Now, if we take a look at the controller action method, notice to the view method, we are passing I enumerable of employee objects. So the model for our view is going to be I enumerable of employee. We know employee type is in employee management dot models namespace. Now let's include the basic HTML structure. Visual Studio can automatically generate this for us. Simply type HTML and then press tab. In the body, we want to include an HTML table. In the interest of time, I'm going to paste some HTML here. This HTML displays the table header with these three columns, ID, name, and department. After the table head, we want table body. Now, we want to loop through each employee object in the model. For that, let's make use of for each loop. Let's name the loop variable employee. As we are looping through each employee object in the model, we want to generate a table row and display each employee details. So let's include a TR. Inside this TR, let's include a TD. We are going to use this TD to display employee ID value. For that, let's use this loop variable employee. We know the employee object has got ID property. Let's use that and retrieve the ID value. Similarly, let's include another TD to display employee name. And then one more TD to display employee department. So for every employee object in the model, a TR with three TD elements will be dynamically generated. So with all these changes in place, let's run our project. There we go. We have the list of employees displayed as expected. At the moment, from a styling perspective, the page does not look that good. In our upcoming videos in this series, we'll install Bootstrap and style the page to make it look good. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.